the longing to break away is in Vishuddhi, Agna and Sahasra. If energies move into Vishuddhi, you can become enormously powerful. If energies move into Sahasra, simply you're ecstatic. Agna is called as the third eye. Once your energies touch Agna, you are intellectually realized. Third eye has been elaborately established as an energy form. Namaskaram Sadhguru. I started meditating ten years ago and after a few years, I could see my third eye, a perfect eyeball. Is it real or am I hallucinating? Now, uh, this needs to be understood. What is uh, referred to as a third eye is not necessarily another eye like this, okay? It is not. It is just that, you know, there are… Hmm, there are, okay. Um, in the pranic system, we talked about the seventy-two thousand nadis. These seventy-two thousand nadis have one hundred and fourteen important junction points in the body. Like you know, in this building, the electrical systems are running, there are many junction point where major meeting of connections are happening. There are 114 junction points in the body. Generally, these are referred to as chakras. The word chakra literally means a wheel. But these are not in the form of circles or wheels. They always meet in the form of a triangle. The nadis always meet in the form of a triangle. And the whole yogic system depends on what you do with them. So out of this 114, seven are held as a major junction points. So these are the seven chakras that everybody is normally talking about. They are in certain… located in certain parts of your body. These are Muladhara, Swadishthana, Manipuraka, Anahata, Vishuddhi, Agna, Sahasrata. Muladhara means the foundation. This is uh, a center which is physically or physiologically, it is located between your anal outlet and your genital organ. It's called the perineum medically. If your energies in, are dominant in your muladhara, food and sleep will be the two major qualities of your life. They will be the most important factors in your life, food and sleep. If your energies are dominant in your Swadhisthana, which is located just above your genital organ, here you will be a pleasure seeker. Pleasure does not necessarily mean sex and things like that. You are somebody who wants to enjoy the world, that's dominant in you. So a person who is a pleasure seeker, he lives little more intensely than a person who is living just for food and sleep. Yes. So these are just different levels of intensities of life. As the intensity increases, your ability to experience different dimensions of life moves from one area of life to another. If your energies move into Manipuraka or if they're more dominant in Manipuraka, you are a doer in the world. You want to do things. Maybe you're a businessman, maybe you're a politician or something where a lot of doing is needed, you know. You are a doer. If energies move into anahata, this is the creative center, you become a creative person. Maybe you're an artist or at least you have tendencies, maybe you didn't make it in the Hollywood but, you know, you're… you want to create more than simply eating and sleeping or seeking pleasure outside, you would like to do something, there is creativity in you. A person, let's say an artist, generally their lives may be considered a little freaky for other people but they experience life little more intensely than let's say a businessman, yes? It's a different level of intensity. The word anahata means unstruck. This is the unstruck sound. This is a meeting between the lower and the higher. 
all your survival instincts are in the lower three chakras. Self-preservation is in Manipuraka, Swadhisthana and Muladhara. The longing to break away from all this and go away beyond is in Vishuddhi, Agna and Sahasrara. Anahata is the meeting point. So Anahata, the symbolism is two triangles meeting. You've seen that the star of David, everything comes from Anahata. Okay, that is the symbol for Anahata too. Upward moving and downward moving triangles meeting because these are two different dimensions of life. One is catering to self-preservation, another is catering to the longing to go beyond. In your head and your heart, you have longings to go beyond, but in your body you have longings to preserve. So if energy is moving to Vishuddhi, it's a power center, you can become enormously powerful, very powerful individuals. When I say power, not necessarily physical or financial or something, people can be powerful in so many ways. Just the very way they stand, some people are powerful, some people are not, isn't it? Yes? So you don't have to do any action. You make ten men stand here, the very way they stand, some men are powerful, some are n aren't, isn't it so? It's not necessarily because of their activity, just the way they are. They don't have to pose for anything, just simply the way they are, there is power about them. If your energies move into Agna, you are intellectually realized. You see things clearly, you see everything the way it is. Once you begin to see everything the way it is, you are at peace. So Agna is called as the third eye because you see things the way they are. With these two eyes are very deceptive. They make you see things the way it is necessary for your survival. They don't make you allow you to see everything the way it is. Once your energies touch Agna, now you're seeing things the way they are, everything the way it is. Now, that is why it is referred to as a third eye. Sahasrar is the seventh chakra that is not in the body, just outside the body. For most people, it is dormant, it is not active. If some sadhana comes into your life, if you activate it in a certain way, or because of a very intense way of living, it can become active. If energy is moving to Sahasrar, you will become unexplainably, unreasonably ecstatic, simply like crazy you're ecstatic. If you come to the Bhava Spandana, you will see, simply for no reason, you will be spilling in ecstasy. You just don't know what's happening, just no external reason. Simply you're ecstatic, simply because your energy is touched, Sahasrara. From Mooladhara to Agna, there are many pathways as to how to get there, any number of methods and teachings as to how to reach there. From Agna to Sahasrara, there is no path. If you want to move from Agna to Sahasrara, because there is no path, that is the reason why many people have gone about propagating peace is the highest thing to achieve because they got stuck here. So from Agna to Sahasrar, there is no pathway. This is the fundamental reason why there is so much stress on a guru in the traditions because if you have to jump, suppose there is here a black hole, if you have to just jump into it, you must be utterly crazy or you must have extraordinary kind of courage or you must trust somebody so much that if he says jump without any problem, you will jump. Otherwise, there's no possibility, isn't it? Because that possibility is not there for many people, that's the reason why they have concluded peace is the ultimate thing because they got stuck here, they wouldn't go up. About seeing a form of an eye is simply because certain… certain systems, certain systems of practices made a whole imagery about it. These images were not just drawn on paper, they established forms of it. This is a whole science by itself. In India, this is called as the science of consecration. In the yogic traditions, 
This science of consecration can be taken to such peaks. Any form you want, you can consecrate it and make it a reality. Right now, let us say I want a fierce dragon established energy-wise. Now, I will es establish a temple for a dragon. And if you go there, you have a deep experience of the dragon because the energy form of the dragon is like alive, like a real thing. Because the science of consecration is such, any form that you want, you can consecrate it and make the energy hold that form. So deities were created for different purposes, whichever kind of form they wanted, they created it. So like this, people created different kinds of imagery for the sake of sadhana so that people could make use of it. It is not… Uh, it is not that that's the way you have it, but it has been established in many traditions. Third eye has been elaborately established as an energy form. If you happen to come in touch with this somewhere, you may begin to see it. But these are two different kinds of yoga. There is something called as right hand yoga and left hand yoga. In the right hand yoga, there is no imagery. Right now, what we are offering to you is that, no imagery. We don't use any kind of imagination because once you go on imagination, you must be in constant care of somebody who knows what is what, somebody who is capable of taking away the images when it is no more needed. Otherwise, you won't know where is reality and where is imagination. You will just fly off into imaginary states very easily. So here we are using a path of pragna where there is no imagery, no imagery at all. Just use yourself to grow. Maybe it is not as colorful as that, but it's more steady, you don't get lost. You know if you take a step forward, you know it, if you take a step backward, you know it. There you will not know, but it's very colorful and exuberant ways. Uh, we also do that, but not with, you know, large groups of people like this. I also very much do those kind of things, but not with large groups of people because people will fly off into imaginary states so easily. <laughs>